Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. So today I'm doing a somewhat abstract uh, watercolor landscape painting. Um, I'm also sort of rambling on about Impressionism and the different types of Impressionism. Also thinking about uh, my own art and how it's developing. And if I was going to put some sort of label, some sort of ism onto it, uh, what one would be most appropriate. So, you know, art has all these different isms, uh, cubism, expressionism, fauvism, and so on and so on. So which one of those would maybe fit with my art the most? Uh, if you'd like to subscribe, uh, you just click on the big red button below and I hope you enjoy today's video. Okay, so today I'm doing a, a very loose, somewhat abstract um, watercolor landscape painting. Um, as with all of my landscape paintings, it's a mixture of um, observation and imagination. So I rarely paint uh, well-known landscapes or beauty spots or tourist attractions. I'm more interested in just the ordinary sort of fields and hills and so on that I can see in Ireland around me. So I'm not drawing any particular part of Ireland or any particular field or well-known beauty spot. It's just, if you like, an impression of how my memories and what I've seen of Ireland. When I first got into painting, the style that I liked the most was Impressionism. However, one of the things about Impressionism was, um, certainly when you read definitions of Impressionism, most of the Impressionist artists wanted to work from life, from going out into the countryside and painting exactly what they saw. And that's obviously not what I'm doing. I'm using a lot of imagination and memory and things like that. So therefore, I could never really call my art Impressionist art. But then, as I started looking into Impressionism, I found that there was actually a lot of variety within what is often, within the group of artists that are often labeled as Impressionists. Degas, for example, famously said that art is not a sport and he would never go out in the countryside and carry all his easels and paints and things and go and paint. He always painted in the studio. And then later on, towards the end of Impressionism, and a newer, so I suppose some younger artists were coming along, and they're often labelled as post-Impressionists. Um, and one of those was uh, Gauguin, Paul Gauguin. And yes, he was inspired by nature and he painted from nature, but he also painted from imagination. And one of the things that set him apart from Van Gogh was that Van Gogh always went out into nature and painted what he saw, whereas Gauguin was quite happy to paint in the studio from memory, from imagination. And I would tend to be more like that. Also, my painting and recently it's becoming even more abstract and when you start getting into abstraction uh, details and things like that are less important of course so i was thinking then is it possible to put any sort of label or ism art ism onto my uh, painting style and you know art has all these different isms like Cubism, Impressionism, Futurism, Fauvism, and so on and so on. Would any of those fit, or would my art fit into any of those labels or styles? Um, it doesn't fit into Impressionism, although Impressionism was a big influence on me. Post-Impressionism wasn't really a style. Um, as I say, it was a, a group of artists who had their roots in Impressionism. They were certainly influenced by Impressionism, but they took it uh, their art style in different directions. 
So I wouldn't put post-impressionism as a label on my art or any contemporary sort of art because it was just really a group of individuals at that time in France. Another form of impressionism was neo-impressionism. But again, my art has absolutely nothing in common with neo-impressionism. Neo-impressionism is sometimes called pointillism. So they took, their painting consists of tiny dots of pure color. And when you're standing up close to one of their paintings, you can see the tiny dots. But when you step back, your eye cannot resolve the tiny dots. They all blend together. So they called it optical blending. Usually artists would um, mix or blend colors either on the palette or on the paper. But these neo-impressionists were kind of blending or mixing the colors on the retina of the person observing the painting. But again, that's not a label that I could apply to my art because it's obviously not that style. There was the post-impressionists and neo-impressionism really ended in the first decade of the 20th century. But later, about 20 or 30 years later, well, probably 30 years later, there was a, a smaller art movement called uh, Abstract Impressionism. And it was, unlike the other forms of Impressionism, which were French or based in France mainly, Abstract Impressionism um, appeared in New York in 1940 or around 1940. Now it doesn't, it's not as well established and not all art historians, art critics accept the term abstract impressionism because they say the art that is labeled abstract impressionism is, it's not different enough. You can't really differentiate it from other forms of abstract art like abstract expressionism. But I disagree with that. I think expressionism, um, it took reality, but it distorted it in some way in order to kind of provoke a feeling or a reaction in the observer. Impressionism never really tried to do that. Impressionism was about just capturing an impression of the, the landscape or the portrait or still life or whatever they were doing. So in that respect, my art is more like impressionism. I'm not trying to, I'm not really trying to make you think or to provoke any reaction in you. If anything, when people look at my art, I want them to feel relaxed and maybe that they could actually be in this landscape. So maybe abstract impressionism, even though it's not a well accepted uh, ism or term or style, maybe it is the best one to fit the way my art is developing, at least for the time being. Uh, if you're interested in impressionism, I do have a very short uh, booklet on my a website. It's free. It's just a PDF download. Um, you don't have to give your name or email or anything in order to get it. Uh, you just download it. It's very short, but it, it has some, a brief summary of some of this impressionism and how impressionism developed. 